Hello and welcome to this week's video. This week's video is all about painting boats using a flat brush technique and also a dagger brush. I expect everybody thought I was going to be painting a sailing boat but I decided on a narrow boat which is just as interesting. My palette today is cadmium yellow deep, titanium white, that's a crimson which is a system three colour, ultramarine blue and viridian green no actually sorry that's thalo green it's more blue than viridian the only um these are all system three the only color that isn't is this white which is senelia and i'm trying this out for the first time i will show you the packet this is the packet and i'm finding actually it's quite high in pigment and it's quite reasonably priced about the same as the system three so i haven't tried any other colors in this but i like their titanium white the brushes I'm using, one is a Pro Art, that's my main flat that I'm going to be using, and this one is the dagger brush, so this is a graduate. I put a background wash of um, an olive green on here so that I'm not fighting the white. And to begin with, I'm going to be looking at my dark areas, so I'm going to start with the boat, and it's very black down here, but this looks slightly blue, so I'm going to be mixing a black, so I'm taking cadmium red, well it's not cadmium red deep, it's crimson, ultramarine, and a yellow, and usually this makes a dark colour, however because these are system 3, the colours are slightly different, I've picked up a little bit of white there, and let's start again. I just added a black to my palette um, because the System 3 colours are quite chalky, they have a lot of white in the pigment. So I usually would mix the dark green, the dark blue and the dark red together to get a dark, very dark colour but however they're too chalky so I'm going to add a black to it. I've also got white in there. Oh dear, well actually what I will do is I'll keep this as the paler blue colour of the boat which does lend itself to green at the back end so I'll put a little bit of green over here and then I've got those two colours mixed it should go a little bit darker and then I will take a black and put that over here add a bit of water a bit more and then I'm ready to begin so taking my flat, I'm going to block out shapes. I'm going to start probably with the boat shape and starting at this end. So that's pretty dark, so I'm going to take some of my black colour. And it starts about here. And I'm just painting in the shape quite thickly. I have to apologise for my neighbours, they're very loud today, so you might hear shouting and a little bit swearing maybe. So going down that side, and I'm going to leave the windows. So but what I probably will do is to get that luminous glow, is to paint them white before I put in the brown. So that's about right don't have to be exact, so long as the boat looks right. So going on to the side, I'm going to leave areas um, where the windows are, but I'm going to try and get the shape. Now I'm looking at the back end and looking at the height of it compared with the front end. And it's about the same height, maybe, yeah, about the same level. So I'll take the line over there, and then if I look at this point here at the back end and go across, I can see that on the horizon of my paintbrush, it goes about halfway up here, so it probably goes to about there. So just blocking out, I think that's a bit dark actually, I'll add a spot of white into it. And the first window comes up quite quickly. And the second, well, there's that crest of arms on the side. 
so there's quite a wide gap going on there I think I might have gone a little bit too far over so I'll have to correct that so I'm going to chop this window a little bit that's it so that line goes down there and it starts to turn green as we go along so this end is a lot smaller so if I get my two windows in there I can see where I'm going and there's another wind no actually there's no window there it's a picture I think it's a painting so I'm just going to put that in afterwards this goes up a little bit over here um, let's check how many windows I've got one two three four and then the end there. I think there's more of a gap between these. So I might have to move my windows up a little bit when I paint because I need a line of red down there. But that will put those in in white anyway. So going down to this shape here, it's pretty black. However, there is this paler blue line going along here. So with a flat brush, I'm just looking where the prow is. Slightly higher than this and it juts out quite a way. So with a flat brush, you can drag it like that to get the good lines and then pull down. And that way you get an interesting uh, texture going on and you can see the brush work. Whereas t the temptation would be just to drag it sideways. That doesn't make for a very interesting mark. It is a lot more interesting pulling it down like that. So it's quite dark along the side there. And it just follows. On the side of the boat, it goes slightly out to the left on that side. I'm not too worried about the line underneath because I'll be redrawing that when I put the black in. So we're going along, filling that in. And as you can see, I'm ignoring the red and the white lines because I'll be putting those in with my dagger brush later. So I think this should go a little bit thicker down here. And that goes on an angle there you can just see the other side of the boat so I'll actually put that in in case I forget it's very dark so with boats it's great to use a flat brush because you get all the nice angles okay so going down to my black area underneath it's very very thin here and I'm going to drag the brush along so I get a nice sharp line And take it round the front like that and then I can just it's so dark I can just pull it down try and get the angle at the front there it goes a little bit further out there's a dark area that goes up over the front a little bit and then just pulling that down I might have to paint over my top line there it's gone a bit high so you can barely see the bottom of the boat so I will just drag it down and get a vague shape and what I will do is I will be painting in some reflections so I will neaten off the boat when I do that. The reflections are so dark in the photograph that you can't really see the bottom of the boat but I'm going to lighten the reflections. So you can see how I'm using the flat, it's great because it covers big areas just by dragging it but also you can use the corner of the flat to get fine detail so I'll just put a little bit of a detail there so a very versatile brush to use I'm going to just improve that line here dragging it like that so there I have the basis of my boat there is a little bit of roof that you can see and I could put that in now but probably I might put a few trees in the background so I'll wait and put that on last because that's very light on top so next I'm going to probably start on the windows I'm going to paint them white the reason being that the green will dull down the light inside them so I want to put the colour over white 
so that it uh, flows more. The white of the page will come through the paint. So here we go. And I'm going to just redraw the shape a bit. And what happens is they curve at the bottom. Now, how low is that? I think that needs to be a bit lower. So I'm going to take it over a little bit. Because I haven't drawn it out, it means that there are going to be inconsistencies and um, the drawing might be a bit random at times, but it does add to character. I'm going to put in this crest. That goes in the middle. It's actually very white on the photograph. And I'm going to put in the second window, which I'm going to bring along a bit. Now, when I'm doing something a bit delicate, I always use my little finger and I just put it on a dry area and that always helps me. So it is quite a bit smaller than the, the first window. And I can redraw the shape of these by um, putting in the dark colour again around them, which I might do. I might paint them first and then do that. So the next one over here. Oops, picked up a bit of red there. That doesn't matter too much. And the last one over here. I'm just using the corner of my brush now because it's a lot more delicate. And then at the end we have the lettering and there's a little picture. So I'll just put a rectangle in for the picture. So perspective wise, it seems to be working at the moment. If you're not sure on your angle and you want to get the, the right angle, what you can do is put your paintbrush or pencil on the angle of the bow and then just, oops, try not to knock it, drag it down to check that you have the angle. And I luckily enough have the angle. That's because I did this point system where I checked that point across the front there. Right, so on to the next thing is I think I might put a little bit of reflection in because it's very dark and I'm working dark to light. So I'm going to take this green, I'm going to warm it up a little bit and put a bit more of the phthalo green in it. That's a little bit too light, so I'll put some black in, a bit of red. And I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to just draw the line along the boat and as you can see I'm using my brush sideways I think the prow should go down a little bit more but I'll do the reflections up to there and then I'm just going to zigzag it using the flat flat is always great for reflections of boats and water so the reflection ends just here at the back end of the boat so this is just my first layer in the water I can also use the corner of my brush everywhere that you can see a dark area on the boat is reflected down into the water so you can actually see the windows reflected so I'm just going to put that in so I can see exactly what I'm doing so that one goes forward that way so when you're doing reflections I know we're talking boats but reflections come into it as well all you need to think about is um, making sure that they're parallel to what's above so going down here we've got another dark area and a flat gives you the, the, the movement of the water really effectively. So another one down there. And going to the back, you actually do see less of the darker area. So I'll just put a little bit in there with the corner of my brush. And another one there. 
and I think that that will do. I think down here it's really dark so I'm just going to fill that in a little bit. I might put a bit of blue in there just for a little bit of interest. And looking at the front, it actually, the reflections go down there like that. That's way too dark. Reflections in water are usually a bit lighter. I think there we go. Down there. Like that, sorry, I've got a cat's tail. <laughs> there. So that's starting off with the basics and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little bit of abstract greenery behind the boat. So I'm going to take a bit of, there's a lot of brown here so I'm just going to put in a brown colour that's got red and yellow and I put it into the green and I think it needs to be a bit darker so I'll add a bit of black. That will do. and. Where I see it around the boat, I'm just going to put it on. That's not dark enough. So put a bit more black into there, a bit more red, a bit more yellow. And going in here, just looking at the shape that I can see because I want to concentrate on the boat. So I'm using the corner of my brush again. Going to add a little bit of oranges in orange, not oranges, orange into that. Nice autumn colours going on here. And I'll take that down to the top of the boat, but then I will be overpainting the roof of the boat a little bit brighter um, over up there. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that in. That's pretty disgusting colour actually, it needs a bit more yellow. Still pretty disgusting, never mind. Should have put a little bit of dark behind there actually, so I'll just do that. And it goes a little bit more green as you go over that direction, so a bit dark into here. Just do a little bit of tapping and scumbling. And then it gets more of a rich brown higher up over here, a bit lighter. So you can allow some of the green from the um, base coat to come through. And it's a good idea when you're doing something like this not to mix too much because then you get little shades of other colours going on in there. This is only a suggestion. And I think a bit more of a nice bright green in there. So a little bit of the yellow, a little bit of the green and a little bit of white. Going into here. Oh, that's very bright. Well, I'm not too worried because ew, white. I can um, just blend it as I go a little bit. A little bit down here. Got lots of colours on my brush at the moment. Take it down nearly to the roof. And over here it's a lot darker. So I don't want to go too dark at the front because I want my boat to stand out a bit. A little bit of orange in there. And I'll make it a little bit paler down the edge of the boat. And then the water comes to about there. So there is um, the bank. So I'll just put the suggestion of a bank. I want actually a dark brown for that. So I'll mix my black with my cadmium red and my yellow to get quite a dark bank just there. A little bit of mystery over there. So I'm not going to paint the trees. I'm just going to put suggestion in a dark area. And 
I lie, I'm going to put in a bit of the tree. So what I'm doing is, with my flat, I take a bit of the yellow and on the other side I take a bit of the brown and I can take a tree down, wiggle in a little bit so I get a bit of texture down like that. I'll take all that paint off my brush and just go in with a darker colour there. And there's another trunk up there. And you can see that works quite well. So I'll do the same again. I'll just get yellow on this side of my brush and just do a line down there like that. And going over to the back end, I'll go a little bit lighter. So I'll go with a paler green because you're starting to see a little bit of light getting in there. I'm not going to put my man in, I don't think. I'll see how I feel towards the end. And then it's quite light over here. And the advantage of working with thick acrylic, take that behind there, is that you can do some blending and pulling it round because it's still wet. So going over here, we do have another bank. It's much more yellow actually over there, much brighter. And the bank is quite dark, so it goes from about here. I'm not gonna have it as dark as the boat. And then because I've got this yellow mixed, I can also put in a little bit of reflected color there and right up to the boat because what that does is it makes the boat stand out take some more going down here and you can just pull it a little bit like that and that suggests reflections i'll just break that line up a bit there and go in with a little bit more of brown in there looks black never mind and also I'll put a little bit of green in there I haven't gone very bright in this and a little bit of green suggestion in there so that reflection from this goes all the way down to the boat near enough so I'm going to just very carefully do a line down and this is what I love about flats you can make some really straight wonderful lines with it just redrawing the boat a little bit and I'm going to put in a little bit of a pale yellow into that reflection that I've just done of the far bank going down there a little bit in there so there's quite a lot of blues and yellows in this reflection a bit more green in sorry blues and yellows I meant green right there we are and then you have your bit of bank that runs around there. That is way, way too black, very sharp and harsh. So I'm going to put a brown over that. Or actually I'll put an orange and that will knock it down. A bit more red, like that. And then I can just put a little bit of that bank in. I've done it very bright. <laughs> That's way too bright. But my focal point is in the bank. So you can just see how you build it up a little bit there. I've changed that colour as I go. There is a little bit of um, an olive green I can see over here. So I'll just put that in. Might as well, seeing as it's on my brush, a little bit into there for a little bit of harmony. And there's a bit of grey in there as well, so I'll be putting that in. So I think that's probably enough for the yellow at the moment in the background. So I'm going to go back to my boat and my white should have dried. What I didn't do was put white in the front doors, so I'll just do those now. I think they're a bit thinner than what I've got them, so... I'm going to um, just thin them out a little bit. So 
okay I haven't quite got them central actually and if I bring that one over a bit when I put the white on I will change the position of them take the black way over there that's it so now I'm going to put the white on and then I'll start painting the windows down the side So this one I've done a bit too low, so I'm going to take it up a little bit. I want quite a nice sharp line and down this side as well. And make this one a little bit more to the left. The nice thing as well about flats is that you can't fiddle around too much. You can't keep going into detail if you use one about this size. This is actually, I think it's around a number six. However, the paint, paint is covering the number, so I can't remember exactly what it is. That's it. So now I have my window there. And I'm going to mix a brown. So I'm ignoring the window frame and I'm just looking at what's inside. And when you're doing houses or anything like that, that's the way to work. Think about what's inside, first of all. So I'm mixing a brown. I want quite a nice, vibrant brown. Orange and a little bit of the phthalo green in there. I think a lot more yellow. And do a test. I think a bit more red and a bit more green so I don't need to mix the colour completely because there are some variations of colour in the windows so going in I can see I'll just put fill it actually just like that And the other window is also, actually, there's a little bit more red in that one. Like that. And then further down, it's a bit lighter. So I'm just going to, on this side, put a paler colour in. And then it goes darker on the right hand side. I'm not worried if I make a mess of my window shapes because I can use the dark colours I've got to redraw. So a bit of yellow in there, a bit of orangey brown in there and then at the end that's actually quite yellow. It does look a bit like a window, it's really hard to judge but it doesn't really matter, it's a small detail. I'm trying to get the big picture here. So I'm going to use a bit of a dark brown within the first window because that's got a darker area in it over here. It's quite dark, a little bit more black maybe. Probably too much black, I'll put some red in there. And I've picked up little bits of yellow which is quite nice, so a little bit of that in. There are some reflections on the glass but they come later. Maybe have a bit more red in there. And this is a little bit more red than what I've got it actually. That's probably too red, but um, I can tone it down a bit with brown. And I think that's probably it for the insides of the windows. This is very dark in here, so I'll take the brown that I mixed earlier and just fill that in there. Like that and then at the front I'll just test reasonably dry I think I can go with that so I'm going to clean off my brush and have a bit of a clean orange to put in there so taking my yellow and red again bit more red and then just a little tiniest hint of green brown it a bit, cool it down, 
between a warm collar into a cool, sorry, a cool collar into a warm collar, tones it down. So I'm going to put this in. And as you can see, I've got all different colours going on on my brush. I've got darker oranges, lighter oranges, yellows, and that works really nicely, I think. It gives you the feeling of the wood inside. Oops, I've gone over my edge. I can pick that up again. That's not a problem. There. And there is a window within here. Which should be a bit of a dark green. So washing off my brush. I just dip into my dark green here and pop that window in. And I'm going to take my dark colour again and just correct the mistakes that I've made on the windows and the window shape. That's it. So reasonably happy with that. I think the windows in the front inside need a little bit more depth of colour. Like so. And then once again, I've gone over, so I have to correct that. So you can see I'm starting to build the form, now it's starting to look like, and if you're doing a sailing boat or a yacht or anything like that, you would work the same way, you would build up the blocks of areas of colour before you put in the details. And usually when I'm doing a landscape or, um, yeah, pretty much a landscape, uh, sorry, seascape, I will work back to front. Um, I started with the boat this time, but normally I would do a bit of background and then put the boat on. So now I'm going to work on the reflections a little bit, which is rather nice. I like doing reflections. I can see in this photograph it looks brown, the boat. So I'm going to go with that. And I've got my a bit of a brown here. That's way too light. So I'm going to put some green into it and a bit more red. A little bit more red. And that's a bit of a darker brown. And I'm just going to, where I see the lights of the windows, I'm just going to wiggle in that brown. And that should be white, so I'm going to ignore that. And a little bit of a dark brown there. You can also see a hint of orange red going down here. And you can see the line of the boat there that goes into the water that way, but I'll be using a dagger brush to do that. What I do need to do is fill in the reflections a little bit more. So with what's on my brush and dipping into my dark colour here, maybe a bit of black, just again following the flow of the water, zigzagging. And I also need to put the bottom of my boat in there. So... I'm going to have that as a, 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 an edge that disappears into the reflection, I think. quite like that little bit of green there. I think I'll leave that. But this needs to be a lot darker. So I'm just making sure I check my reflections. So that's a little bit too far across. So I'll just put in that dark line in the middle. And it goes darker here. And taking that orange, I'm just going to put that in across a little bit. Oh, that's very red. That's too red. I think we've got to be slightly realistic. We are painting in a slightly realistic way. So I've ended up, uh, it's a little bit too solid. So I'm going to take my dark colour, my black, and I'm just going to go into the edges of that, like that. And that just ripples it. Okay, like that. And you can't see much of the top of them, so I'll take that down like that. This is very murky and dark in the water here. I'm going to go in with um, dark green again. I'm going to go over this. Darker in here. Okay. 
and again darker into here the paper that i'm using by the way is de la Roni, um acrylic paper and what i'm finding is the acrylic dries really flat unfortunately now the top of the boat is here so that's why i'm having to put another layer on and it goes down to here and then you kind of lose the boat a little bit in the reflections it goes towards the bank and down here is a warm reddish brown so i'm just going to put that in probably a bit too red but that will disappear as it dries put a bit of orange within it i think and you can drag it down as well if it's a bit too you don't want everything to be complete zigzags so dragging down a little bit gives the feeling of water as well and then you can go across side to side if you want to again fill that in there's actually a pale gray so i'm going to take some white and just put it into my hodgepodge of color that i've got here and it does come up with a gray because there is a blue a red and a yellow so all the primers mixed together make gray so i'm just going to put a little bit of gray in and a little bit down here and also there are some further down here there's a little bit of warmth in a reflection over here which i want to incorporate that's too warm so i will draw that down with a little bit of green on my brush take that out of it and then go back in with the dark over it because that was way too big and then you get an awful lot of movement going on here when you come towards the bank the bank actually should be higher i did it way too low so i can mix i'm going to mix a yellow green so taking my cadmium yellow deep and some of the phthalo a bit more yellow quite bright that bank a bit of white that's too much white so i'll take yellow on one side here you need a lot of yellow because it's weak weak color and i'll just push in a little bit more bank there i'm not going to spend a lot of time on the bank a few leaves and things on the bank which if i was doing the whole as a painting i might splatter a bit but i'll just take this bright yellow down to the end here and while i'm at it i'm going to put a little bit in the background here oops picked up too much white there so even though i work from the background to the foreground I'll still go back into the background if I feel it needs it. So I'm just scrubbing this in. The background actually is rather dull. Hmm. So let's see if I can brighten it up a little bit. This is the wrong yellow. It should be a little bit more orange. But I will leave the background. I just wanted to emphasize it a little bit more. And you can actually put in a few suggestions of trunks. Like that. And you've got one there as well. This is, I don't actually like using black much because it is too stark. So I'll get over that. Anyway, we'll ignore that because uh, we're concentrating on the boat. So I think I'm almost ready to use my dagger brush. And I've not used one of these before, so it's new to me. But I have seen a demonstration on how this is used, so I'm just going to have a bit of fun with it. 
So you can do the same things as with a wriggle brush. So you can use it to make lines, very, very, very thin lines. And you can do undulating lines that go fatter and thinner like that. So I'd rather like that. So I can use it in the reflections. I'm going to do the pale reflections in the water. I'm going to use white, but I'm going to put a dash of blue in just a little tiny bit, hardly anything, just to knock the white away because I think that would be too bright. So going in with my dagger, I can do much finer lines of reflection. Bring it across a little bit maybe. And there's quite a bright area over here. So down here. And then it goes a little bit more blue, not quite so bright over here at the back end of the boat. So taking my dagger brush down there and up to the bank. So that's added a bit of light. It actually makes the black a little bit harsh there. So I might at some point think about um, going over the black with a dark brown. So going down here, I can use the tip. Actually going to drag it that way and that way to try and get more of a sharp tip. It's a little bit tricky to use for um, ref doing the fine ripples actually because I'm not too sure if I'm going to get the, um, the smaller lines, the narrower lines. There's a little bit of flotsam on the water as well which I'm going to be putting in. I can take the corner of the brush and where I see the reflection of the coat of arms I'm going to put that in. that and also I think I can just see the reflection of this line it's not very bright so I'm going to tone it down with a bit of orange but I'm still going to put it in I'm picking up some of the paint that's already there actually because it's still wet and there's a kind of a dotting effect there is a very slim white line down here so I'm going to use it to put that in like that and I can see the Pride of York which is the name of the boat is reflected down there very linear so I'm just going to do that so it's about here and I think there should be some yellow in that just going to give the impression of it which is all I can see in the reflection actually. And I think I will drag a bit of a colour through that because it is a bit broken. And I think that I need to go down a little bit taller with my lettering, a bit lower. And also I can see the front of the boat somewhat reflected. It's quite dark around here as well. So I'm going to go back to my flat and just put in some of that river or canal. I don't want to go as dark as I see in the picture because I'd like the boat to stand out a little bit more. So I'll go up to the prow of the boat. Like that. And then into my dark green. Just drag it around a little bit. I hadn't noticed but on the front of the boat there is a little thing that you can tie your rope to so I'll put that in. I'll just quickly go into my black and put that on top like that. So coming down here I think I'll go a little bit darker So with what I have on my brush, I'm going 
darker so that reflection has disappeared a little bit I'm slowly filling in areas. I don't think the reflection is quite dark enough, but I don't want to go in with a hefty black, so I'm just going to go in with a little bit of a darker blue colour, just at the front there. And I think I'm going to lighten this, use a bit of artistic licence, because I think that will throw the boat forward a bit. And towards the bank, I'm going to make it a bit paler as well. Like that. So, hmm, not sure if that quite works. Might need a bit of thought. The back, the bank needs to be a little bit darker. A bit darker in here. A bit of nude. And I think maybe I'll have a little bit of water um, suggestions of a few ripples around the um, bank. Oh, actually, I don't quite like that. But you know what? I like that. So I'll have to put a little bit of reflection in the land as well. So that it meets up there it's looking very dark actually but then I haven't got the highlights on yet so looking at this um, I think I'll keep that for now um, I might want to change it later but when I put my very pale blue lines on with my um, dagger brush then I think that might change it might look um, a bit better so taking my dagger brush again, I'm going to do these lines. Now they're not white, they're off-white and they're a blue-white. So I'm just going to take some white and pick up whatever's on my palette and put in some blue. I think it should be a lot more blue. It looks white, but when you look at it closely as a colour, it is pretty blue. And I don't want it to stand out really starkly. So I'm going to add a bit of water to it to make it more runny, which is what you do if you're using a rigger. And then take the paint off my brush so that it's got a nice sharp edge and then just drag through it like that. And I'm going to start, this is where you need a really steady hand. I'll move my palette and go along the first line which is at the bottom and i'm getting the line is a little bit varied but actually i think that works quite well it's as if the light's shining on it in some areas and not in others taking it around here And it's got a little bit thicker at the front, like that. And the next line, there's actually two lines there. It goes very light on the top of the boat, which I might add a little bit more of pale colour on, on top. But I'm, oh dear, that's a bit thick. Take some of the paint off. It takes a while to get used to a new brush, really, I think, sometimes. So... Should have done that wider, but I don't think that will be a problem. It's wide at the front. It goes very pale at the front, actually. So over here, there's a little bit of a, a highlight. And then you have a pale line running along the top here. And then over the top of this little thing that you tie your rope on. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to neaten this line a little bit. And make that line more solid.
like so. And I think I'll make this one a little bit thicker because it is actually two lines together. And all the way down the edge here, there's a very, very thin pale line. There's a little light. So I'm going into details now. There's a little light there. Put that in. And I can see a little bit of reflected light on the doorknobs just here. And there. There's a little um, something there, which I will just suggest. And then I'm going to put the um, line around the name plate. Yeah, you have to be careful. If you're trying to do thin lines, you just don't want to be putting too much paint on the brush. And line at the bottom. And there's also a little line that goes down there, so I'll just pop that on. Hmm. So within that plaid, I think it's a bit darker than what I've got it. So I'll take my dagger brush and I'll just run a dark colour inside there. Going across like that. I've had to put the light on because it's gone so dark in here. I think it's going to rain, but that does change the colour a little, a little bit. So going back to the top of the boat, I think there's quite a dark line above that red. And I've gone quite pale, so I'm going to put that in. So I'm using a lot of observation at the moment. And my paints are drying because it's quite warm today for October. We have had such a good year weather-wise. Put that in a little bit darker along there. Hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to do now where my red line is, I'm going to do a thick white line and then I'll put the red line over. So taking my crimson, I haven't got much left of it, so I'm going to squeeze some out. The white line along the side is much paler, so I'm going to use off, slightly off-white and I can afford to go quite thick with this so it curves up at that end and along there like that. Oops, uh-oh, mistake. That's okay, I will rectify that. Wow, my hand's not being very steady. Take the line down. I think actually to do lines you have to have this brush upright. That's a real really big thick line that is going to have to go. <laughs> but anyway, I'll carry along the bottom, carry on. And as I said, reasonably thick so that the red line will show. And while I'm at it, I might put in the, the lettering at the end. So that's a slight off-white. So I'm just going to do the suggestion off. Goes in a semicircle at the top and also a straight line at the bottom. Pretty typical of narrow boats. There, that will do. And I'm going to fill in that little strange looking sort of window shape at the back there. It's way too bright. It's actually quite green in there. So I'm going to mix it a quick green. Make it a bit olive and put that in.
and I'm going to have to go a little bit darker in there if it's too light. Okay. I feel the need to put my mum in on the back of the boat, so I probably will end up doing that. So on the, no, I'll leave the roof, I'm going to do the window frames. So that's an orange. And going across like that. And there's a line goes across there. So using a dagger brush, it takes a while to get used to. I think I do prefer a rigger for a lot of the fine lines, but also it's um, you do get quite a nice expressive line across there. There's also a little bit of yellow next to the heraldic shield, so I'll just put that in. I'm going into detail quite a bit here. Across there like that. And then there is the edge of the window that runs down. So like that. And I think I'll go in a little bit darker in the end, sort of strange looking window. So now I'm going to neaten up around my windows. And I could use that or the rigger really. So I'm going to mix um, another dark blue that I had before because it's all dried out. So I'm going to put um, black with ultramarine, a bit of red bit of green so it's not really dark a bit more blue I think there should be a little few areas that are a bit darker and there is a little bit of texture in that area there sorry it's a two year old meltdown going on outside And a little bit darker down here. That girl can really sing. And I'm reshaping the window here. So just neatening up a little bit. And I think also I need to neaten up this line. It actually sags in the middle. Like that. And I can see there's quite a bit of reflected light from the trees and the sky on it, so I'm going to put that in. So now I'm working very much on the details. I still haven't put my lines in there actually, so I'll uh, mustn't forget that. So I'm mixing a sort of a pale grey and just put that in. a lot of light going along there and just where I can see areas of it I'm putting it in so I don't get it down at the other end I've also missed out the white line that runs down the middle there And 
and I'm going to put the line that runs along the front here. And I'm going to put the roof on, I think. There's a hint of purple in that roof. I think a bit paler because that will bring the boat forward. And while I'm at it, I'm going to put the um, lines in down here, so you can barely see them. There's just one there, and it goes up to here where it gets stronger, and then you've got a second one. And then you've got the hint of one down there. I'm going to take a dark red and work these a little bit because they're a little bit pale in there. Darker line in there and in there. I could go over this a little bit, a bit darker. There's a real warmth inside this boat and then I'll have to go in my, with my dark colour again and just redraw the edges of it. So I'm thinking that um, I think this needs a bit more blue in it. It's gone a little bit too um, black. So I'll mix in a green with the blue and I'll just put a little bit of colour in there to add a little bit of interest. And I think I'll put a little bit of colour into here as well. I can redraw the bottom of that window. Add a bit of colour into the reflection and I think that pale reflection actually that's fine because I'll put be putting a red down it so I'm going to do the um, the shield which has a sort of a crown on top I think and then you've got a line down here and across so in the water I'm just going to use the very edge of my dagger brush and wiggle a little line. There is also red going on here, which I'm going to put in, and down there. So I'm going to be brave now because I've been um, avoiding it, and that is I'm going to put in my red line. This is where it could all go pear-shaped which it just has done. <laughs> I'm going to have to go over that in white, I think. So down here. Dragging it as I go. I think I find with a rigger brush I get more paint, the line lasts longer. And then the red line is above the white at the top there, that's way too much. And now I haven't got any on.
So what I will do is wait for that to dry and then neaten up the white line again. And I'm going to take some of my dark colour and just shave off a bit of that. Like that, I think my uh, reflected light over here is a bit stronger than what I've got it. And I think that I'm happy with that. So looking at it, I think I'm going to put in those little, um, I don't know what they're called. Um, they're kind of like to put the ropes on. They're quite pale up there and I think that brings the boat forward again. Away from the, back, the, the background. No, this one's quite bright. And I'm going to lighten up the front a little bit so it comes forward. I still would recommend a rigger for rigging on a boat. Well, actually, I quite like that. I might leave that. And then for the lettering, I'm not going to write at all. I'm just going to put an approximate. I'm going to put some red on first. So this is the first word. Pride of York. So I'm just going to give a suggestion of the letters. I think I'm going to put a little bit more orange yellow into the area behind the boat just to give it a little bit more interest maybe down here a bit now the um, where the man is it's a lot sharper with color, with um, detail so I'm going to put the man in I'm going to start off with an orange color for his head So he's sort of about here. He's got blue on. So this will be his jumper underneath his red coat. That's his sleeve. And I'm going to put a dark cap on him so he stands out. Maybe put even put a little bit of white on it. And then I've got the red of his jacket as well. So using the corner of my dagger, just put the red in. He's quite bright so he stands out. That's all I need. Just neaten up the middle like that. And where he is, there's also, I'm not sure what that is, but there's a red, red thing. So I'll put that in. And he also has, uh, it looks like paddles actually, because they do have paddles, don't they? I think, I'm trying to remember, last time I went on a narrow boat was a while ago. That's not light enough. So I'm going to take my yellow and put white into it. And have that a little bit lighter. That's too, too white. I don't want it too white. It will flatten it. So that goes across there like that. And then another one. And this line here, which I can just touch the dagger on and pull the line across. I don't think... That's quite bright enough. And there's a few little areas on top of the boat that are a bit brighter as well.
So now I'm going to neaten up where my red lines are. And then there's a few little details to do. And I think probably that will be just about it for today. Pull this in. There's a few lines that just run through. I'm going to put the flotsam on as well. I'm just going to run a few like that. They're not actually in the photograph, but I thought it would be interesting and make them look it look a little bit more like there's ripples going on. So I'll just do the lettering. No, actually I won't because my red's not dry yet. But what I will do is try and get a better line on the white here. So we a bit better across here. I'm barely touching because if I press too hard I'll end up with a big fat line. That's still wet that red at the end there. And I need to take the red over here to the end. There's also a little tiny very pale highlight on the edge of the boat here. It's too, too hefty, too fat. I'll drag it a little bit over. And then shrink it with a bit of lap underneath. Like that. So I think that a little bit of tweaking of tonal values around here, because that is actually quite white up there. And a little bit of a yellow line that goes, that's the edge of the window. I think the edges of my windows probably need a little bit more work. So... Um, yeah, I think that's just about done. I'm just going to put some of the floating leaves now on the surface. So I'll mix my red with my yellow because they're quite orange. And just put them on like that. There's a few dots. Over here. So I'm just following what I can see. Two leaves here. And there's a little bit of yellow here. Just to warm it up a little bit. And I'm going to put in a little bit of uh, a red to echo this window a little bit so it just makes it a little bit more colourful a little bit warmer and I want to add a little bit more of a brown into here So that basically is my narrow boat. Um, I think there's probably a few little highlights I need to put on. There's something over here which I think is a little, it's probably just um, a, small, a small logo. And there is also something on there. It didn't work very well actually. <laughs> but what I will do is I'll put in a bit of background. That's too dark. And just re redraw that. Mm. 
Hmm. Going to neaten up this area here. It's a bit bitter. Oh, and lastly, I've got to name this boat. So using a bit of a Ronnie White. I'm only going to suggest the lettering. There's actually a rope that's going over the edge here. Drops down and just goes up again. It's wet. So then I'll just fill that in with a dark line. So you can see there's a rope with a shadow. I think there's a few highlights in the windows that I haven't got. And there we are, there's the narrow boat. So I hope that was helpful to you. Um, as for the dagger brush, um, on first time use, there's things I like about it. I like the way you can drag it and get a line that you can undulate. Um, but I think I'd for, for perfect lines, I'd prefer a rigger. So that's it for today. Um, hope you enjoyed and I will see you next week. Bye.